Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries and our Super Bowl 49 recap. This could be the best Super Bowl of all time. It was that epic. Unless you were a Seattle Seahawks fan, yeah. it might not be the best for you. No. We will recap a great game and a game that has a lot to talk about. I'm RJ here with FPS Kyle. What's going on, man? And Retro Brett. What's up, players? Guys, uh, what do you think? That's got to be in at least the top three Super Bowls of all time. It was definitely epic. Amazing game. I mean, just from the very beginning, it looked like the two teams were trying to feel each other out in the beginning. And uh, just straight back and forth. I mean, for the whole first half of the game, we're like, damn, I can't really pick a team yet that's really outplaying their team. I know mm -hmm. Seattle's offense kind of started off a little slow. Patriots jumped out. Brady, Brady looked good. He was hitting a lot of passes, but then when he got in the red zone, you were big-time interception. Oh, yeah. Retro Brett, you actually attended what I believe is probably the best Super Bowl of all time between yeah, the Pittsburgh. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. That's why I said you attended that. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Arizona Cardinals. Of course, Ben Roethlisberger, last second throw to Antonio, uh, whatever, I can't even remember at this point, um, Holmes. Yeah. It seems like so long ago at this point. Yeah. But uh, this one definitely, it's got to be right there. Oh, yes. Well, you can't beat being tied at 14 at half. I mean, that that's something special. That's a real game. It's not, no one's blowing each other out mm -hmm. at that point, at least at, at that point. And yeah. We did see a real game. We had, we had like epic comebacks during the game oh, in yeah. two different situations. Definitely. Let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. Thank you for joining us for our Super Bowl recap. Let's break it down. As we kind of alluded to, the first quarter didn't really start off with too much action. It, it had some drives, but you had... A really weird interception by Tom Brady. We were wondering where that came from. He seemed to be on point, but that one was just off course. Maybe it was a wide receiver miscue. We'll have to take a look at that more in depth. But nonetheless, it was a red zone interception. Can't be pulling that off. Yeah. Seattle gets the ball back. It's a legion of boom. You kind of have to expect it. But it was but a really fast first quarter. On the Seattle, like I said, in the beginning of this game, they couldn't get anything going offensively. They continued to try to run the ball with Marshawn Lynch, but he kept getting shut down. And uh, even though they had the interception, New England still scores first. They had the touchdown pass to Brandon LaFell. And uh, really, at this point, Tom Brady was on fire. He was like 8 for 9, almost had 100 yards passing already. And just he really came out the gate looking absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, he did. Other than the pick. Yeah, other than the pick. I mean, the pick was just it was one of those things. He got hit. and But, I mean, when he was playing at the level he was, it didn't matter because they got the ball back, was able to drive downfield. I mean... Wow, did you expect him to use Shane Vereen as much as they did in this game? I think he had 11 <sighs> catches out of the backfield. And, and you know what? You bring that up. Early on, they did go to the power back, LeGarrette Blunt, but he just wasn't getting it done. No. He, he was getting some decent runs. He had some, I think, a seven-yard run early on where he was trucking over some guys, but most of the time wasn't getting much. And there was that sense that he wasn't going to bust anything against the Seattle Seahawks defense. So mm -hmm. went to Tom Brady. He was going to Edelman all day. Gronk had some big catch, uh, big catches, but they were few and far in between. Really straight-up defensive overall. Nonetheless, the Patriots strike first. What were you thinking at that point, Retro Brett? As, as the Patriots strike first, you kind of think that they can tame the Seattle Seahawks defense, which the Denver Broncos failed to do last year. Well, that's not what I was thinking at all. It took quite a while for anyone to score, actually. And like uh, FBS Kyle said... They seem to be uh, feeling each other out and boxing you know, match esque. Oh, mm -hmm. as we would expect, but it took a while for them for uh, the Patriots to score. Mm -hmm. It's not one of their normal games at all. Yeah, well, I should also mention. Of course, this is the Super Bowl. Right? One thing that might have led to the to the drought in scoring, Retro Brett, and the eventual Patriots score was you had really good defensive backs by the Seattle Seahawks. One of their main guys, Lane, did get injured after getting the interception off of Brady. So that knocked him out, stepped up one of their other DBs, Simon. Mm -hmm. They definitely picked on him. They definitely and uh, that, that showed right away because Brandon LaFell got the touchdown. It's an 11-yard pass. Went right for Simon, got the touchdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, Tom Brady on point, leading them to the lead. Seattle uh, ended up striking back. Then you had New England striking back with not much left time or mu not much time left in the first half, but Seattle Seahawks pull off one of the best last second 
uh, first half drives you'll see get that touchdown. Yeah, for about a second left. Guy no one ever has probably ever heard of named Chris Matthews comes with a huge big pass. Working at Foot Locker. Yeah, working at Foot Locker in the off season gets picked up um, by by the Seahawks, and all of a sudden, Seahawks or the uh, Patriots cannot defend this guy. They're just throwing the ball up to him. He's using his size, his big guy, going up and getting it. And uh, comes down with a, a big, you know, 11-yard touchdown pass from Russell Wilson. Kind of remind me of my game. Tom Brady. Actually. With two seconds left. Oh, I'm sorry, Russell Wilson. With, with two seconds left uh, at the half. That was a huge touchdown mm-hmm. to tie the game up. Going into halftime, tied up. I mean, at this point, we're thinking, damn, this is this has the potential to be a really good Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, holy. Yeah. It was. Oh, man. 14-14. We already knew it was going to be a close game. And definitely uh, was uh, looking like what we expected early on. A defensive showdown, but two teams that just somehow score even when you think that it's not going to happen because the defense seems to stop their number one priority. Yep. Uh, in this case, Gronkowski for the Patriots had his big moments, but like I said earlier, didn't really happen all that much. It was kind of sparingly. And Beast Mode had 100 yards rushing, Never had that Beast Quake-esque run mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl. The first touchdown he did get was a great run, and it did show that he was on his game, but the Patriots are just tough to run on. One thing I kind of want to throw out there as we uh, finish off the first half, I noticed a lot of the Patriots' really good players just not playing up to par. Uh, Dante Hightower early got knocked out, and Jamie Collins, one guy we really respect here at Trippy Commentaries, He was getting beat time and time again. How about the play where Chandler Jones had a beeline for Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson just was almost mind-fucking him and uh, ran right around him? Yeah, that play was too easy for Russell Wilson because Chandler Jones came at full speed. All he had to Mm -hmm. do was just sidestep him. (laughs) Russell Wilson, he started this game off. His stats didn't look that good, but I still thought he was playing pretty well. Uh, He wasn't taking chances. He wasn't turning the ball over. And uh, like I said, that connection with him and Chris Chris Matthews, it just changed everything. Because now it seemed like coming out of the third quarter, uh, the Seahawks end up getting a field goal coming out of the gate. And then they also score a touchdown. So at that point, we're thinking, damn, this Seahawks are about to run away with this now. Uh, Ten points in the third quarter here for the Seahawks. Yep. And nothing for the Patriots. So the Patriots throw out a donut. They're one of those teams that we all kind of trust makes a lot of really good uh, first half to second half uh, enhancements. Mm-hmm. You can say, of course, changing the game plan up. And who knows what the Patriots are doing. <laughs> they probably got some kind of statistics coming down from the satellite <laughs> that they beam in. But uh, they couldn't pull it off in the Super Bowl. Zero points in the third quarter. You have a nice touchdown by the uh, Seahawks there. And you go into the fourth quarter with a 10-point deficit. We know Tom Brady can pull this off, but we knew this would would be an epic Super Bowl Bowl. if for some reason the Patriots could come back. And he's already thrown two interceptions at this point. So what is he thinking mentally? Like, damn, I can't turn the ball over anywhere else. We're definitely going to lose this game. Uh, We have a drive here. We must go down the field and score. And New England does exactly that. I mean, Tom Brady was was masterful in the way he – he would take just the littlest plays, you know, dump it off to Vereen, hit Edelman over the middle, yeah. just keep taking a chunk at a time, chunk at a time, chunk at a time, move all the way down the field. Vereen all day. I mean, that, that right there, that drive was was a Super Bowl caliber drive. That is what turned this whole game around, and all of a sudden, Patriots had the momentum going because Seattle comes out and their offense takes a shit. Yeah, really, the uh, Seattle Seahawks offense was not able to get first downs, and really they were not able to score at all leading to two consecutive touchdowns in the fourth quarter by the Patriots. So after getting outscored 10 to nothing in the third quarter, they come back outscore Seattle 14 to nothing. But at the very end, Seattle did have that one last drive with two minutes and two seconds to win the game. Russell Wilson looked like he was on fire. He looked like he was in the zone and he looked like he knew what he was doing. I don't think he had any doubts. He traveled down the field, tried to get it to his boy Chris Matthews again, who had an insane game. If he would have made, uh, what would that be, a 40 or 50-yard touchdown at that point, touchdown, that would have been incredible. Instead, they matriculate down the field thanks to a great pass to Marshawn Lynch, a couple other passes, and 
A crazy, a crazy yes. pass to Jermaine Curse. Can you explain what happened on this one? Uh, I mean, we were, I thought I was seeing flashbacks to David Tyree moment. I was, I mean, this play happens. I'm like, I'm sure, Tom Brady was too. Uh, I was like, <laughs> Seattle's meant to win this game. They were meant to win this Super Bowl after the game they went through with Green Bay. The crazy comeback they had in that game uh, with the onside kick, and now they get some crazy pass play where Curse is falling down, bounces off his leg, bounces off another player, and then he catches it. Puts him down on like the seven yard line. I mean, you think at this point it's game, right? Uh, run the ball with beast mode a couple times and and win the game. Oh yeah, uh, I mean first play, first down of course. Hand off to beast mode. Looks like they're gonna win first. You know second down on the one yard line. At this point we're thinking, wow, Seahawks got it. But well, going back to that pass play, retro Brett, man, that that's one of the best plays in Super Bowl history. That that kind of remind me of the Odell um, Beckham. No, not uh, who's the guy that plays for the Giants? David Tyree. David yeah. Tyree yeah, that we just mentioned. Of, yeah, that I mean Odell all Beckham. That, all that. He made a great catch too, yeah, but this but, was uh, a little bit more of a juggling act. I will say that the last four minutes of this game was probably the most unique ever in Super Bowl history. The, the last a, fourth quarter, it was you amazing. Got an insane catch, followed by a last play interception. Yes, kind of getting into uh, the very last play in the drive. You had Russell Wilson with the ball. We're thinking he's going to definitely hand it off to Marshawn Lynch on the one-yard line. Yep. And instead, he throws what it. What is up with that? And I kind of see where he was going because he did have the guy with a nice slant, but there was number 21, I believe, uh, Butler for the Patriots. Yeah, Closing in, kind of got him right at the last second as far as cutting him off, getting the ball, getting the interception, getting out of the end zone at the one-yard line, and uh, giving it back to the Patriots with next to no time left. I mean, this was probably one of the easiest plays this guy's ever had to make in his football career because you know that if they're passing the ball here, the guy in the slot, who was where Baldwin was, pretty much the only route he can run right here is a quick slant. So all he did was watch Russell Wilson... Russell Wilson took one step, looked right there and threw. He just ran up, muscled uh, Baldwin, and took the interception. And yep. just, I mean, this game, this play right here really ruined the this game for me because you know you want to see you want to see a team win that earns to win and that drives down the field, makes that epic comeback, and wins the game by putting it away. How do you not give it to Marshawn Lynch? He's probably going to score, and even if he doesn't score. You still had a timeout. There's still 30 some seconds left in the game. Double down. You can easily run another play because we were getting on Belichick. We're like, why is he not calling a timeout? He was just letting the clock exactly. Run down. He made the original mistake. If they would have called a couple timeouts, then or even possibly let him score. Because think about that. We were thinking, dude, just let him score. Thank goodness they didn't do that. Instead, you know, it, it's. Seattle is, makes the mistake right back. This has got to be the worst call I've ever seen Jeez. in such a big game yeah. in the NFL. Probably in NFL college. I mean, there was that uh, that LSU play with Lester Miles. Or, well, that's another story. There's a crazy play at the end of a game. Well, this back one to the uh, Russell Wilson pass. One thing i got to ask you, K-Mac, is it, do you think it's because they trust Russell Wilson's not going to throw a pick in that situation? I mean, Wilson, he he's the last guy you'd think would do that. I mean, it's not really Russell Wilson's. I mean, it had nothing to do with Russell Wilson. He put the ball where it needed to be for the receiver to make the play. It's just that as your slot, as your nickel cornerback, which was what Butler was playing, mm -hmm. he knows that, in, and he's already playing on the inside of him because he's got to take away the slant. There's no other route that that uh, slot receiver can beat you in on a quick pass. So he's looking at Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson takes one step and throws. He just reacts on it, yeah. makes the interception. I mean, I still don't think Russell Wilson should have pulled the trigger in that situation where you're. This is a Super Bowl on the line. You have to just make sure, no matter what, that nothing bad can happen and something bad, something really bad happens. Well, when you're a lot of times when you're throwing quick slants, you, what you're seeing is you, they can't always even see to where they're throwing. They Oof, just know that risky. that's where that receiver is going to be at that point. Yeah, that it is that's very fucking risky. Why? I mean, that's a play you run on like fourth mode. down or something when you need to pass it. You you you've been stuffed three times in a row. If Marshawn Lynch gets stuffed three times in a row, then pass the ball gets picked off. Good job by New England, but yeah. you run them one time and you don't give them the ball again. It's kind of disrespectful to Marshawn Lynch. Give him the football. It's disrespectful to all the Seattle Nation. Give him the football and win the fucking game and be back-to-back wow. -back Super Bowl champions. They had it. That that and I feel I feel you why you're disappointed because that was the Seattle Seahawks championship and that would have in been the epic, bank. Epic comeback too. 
But. Well, it was an epic comeback for the New England Patriots. Straight up, Tom Brady, two touchdowns at the end. Yeah. Tom Brady has proven himself yet again. He Definitely. has tied Joe Montana. He now, yeah. you, you can call him Tommy, Tommy Montana. Montana. Tommy he, Montana. He is in that pantheon for pretty much forever. I've said that Joe Montana is the best Super Bowl quarterback of all time and best quarterback of all time because for Super Bowl championships now... Tom Brady can say the same. Also mm-hmm. made it to a couple other Super Bowls, and uh, uh, that's an epic comeback. Yeah, that's one for the books. And that's that's definitely a good argument. Uh, that could be another video of who we feel is at that top spot now. But Brady sure as hell makes a good claim for himself. Now here's what we got to bring up, guys. After the uh, big interception, you had a play on the one yard line. Terrible, terrible penalty by the Seahawks. Brought it five yards out. Unfortunately, the guy slipped up, and that's free five yards. Because there was still a chance of a safety at that point. Mm-hmm. Next play, you had, uh, I believe it was Bruce Irvin. No, no, I'm sorry, Michael yeah. Bennett. Michael Bennett. And- come out and spear Rob Gronkowski. Well, of course, Retro Brett, you've seen Roman Reigns, you've seen Goldberg, all the best, pull this off. What do you think about Michael Bennett's spear? I think it ranks right up there with the best of them. I, uh, I really, really liked it. He should be in the WWE, or at least the yeah. XFL. Yeah, I'm sure he had his bike ready to go, ready to ride around, and he had to flatten the tires on that one. I believe uh, that's what caused the penalty to be the ball to be moved. Uh, no, that was no, that that, yeah, that was an encroachment penalty. Also, Bruce Irvin had gotten a penalty as well and got thrown out of the game. Bruce Irvin pretty much started that whole fight. Yeah. Uh, it came up and stuck Gronkowski, and then Gronkowski started swatting at guys, and then Michael Bennett pulls off the spear, takes him down. Yeah. That was crazy. What did you think about that? I mean, that was funny how Michael Bennett, because at that point, we all know what was what was going down. Patriots win. Whether they deserve it or not, we'll talk about that in a second. But that's how epic to see Michael Bennett spear Gronk. That's exactly who we went for you right gotta, Yeah, you also got to think of how pissed off that Seattle defense is right now. They're like, really? They're we did hated. everything we could to fucking win this game, and our offense blows it with a decision like that. Obviously, that defense was very upset at that point, and... Uh, I mean, the game's pretty much over, so yeah. let some frustration out. You know Gronkowski and some of other players are running their mouth. Um, so that's, just, that's part of the game. I, I kind of like it, actually. I like when the guys go at it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hockey, man. Especially it's, in the Super Bowl. To me, it shouldn't be like a... It shouldn't be a, a flag the way it is in football. You shouldn't get ejected. Maybe you should have to go to the sideline for, like, three plays. Kind of make it like how hockey is. You go to the penalty box... Go to the sideline for a drive. You can't come back out. That would be a good idea, actually. Unique. Now, it might, <laughs> you might have more people tagging other players just saying, fuck it, I'll sit out the next drive. Now, uh, giving you guys some intel on what happened after the game, they did go right to uh, Pete Carroll with the interview. We really wanted to see it. And he said straight up that he told his team that it was his fault. You had a lot of his own players saying, why didn't you run beast mode? What the F? And, uh, you know, Pete Carroll straight up told us that's what happened, and he told his players that that's my fault, bad play call, and I'm the reason we lost. It'll be interesting to see how the Seattle Seahawks take it going forward with that mentality. Yeah. And, uh, man... I mean, I, a I, tough one. I see what when he explained it, I see where he's coming from. He said, you know, we wanted to run first down, try to surprise him and hit the pass on second down, and then run third and fourth down if we needed to, versus having to throw the ball later. Which, but I mean, come on, man, you have one of the the hardest running backs in the league to take down, probably one of the the best running backs on the goal line that you can find. He's gonna score. It's on the one yard line. That's what the man is made to do. That's what he's on your team for. And uh, that's just a bad call, man. It's a terrible call for Seattle. It really is, and it's going to be a tough one for the fans. Um, They could have had a back-to-back championship thing going on here, possibly a trilogy going into next year. All these players are still young. They're talking about bringing Marshawn back, and their their defensive backs aren't going anywhere, particularly Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, and Richard Sherman. Russell Wilson is only going to get better. Tough one for uh, him to swallow as well. You know, he he was being so clutch in these moments, and now on his resume is an untimely failure. How do you think this affects them next year, man? Like, do you think this is something that is going to hurt Seattle and kind of divide them and and cause further problems? Because I remember there was some issues in the off season after they won the Super Bowl. So after losing a Super Bowl in this fashion. Do you think questions come up about Pete Carroll, the the decisions? I mean, because that kind of stuff there that. That's stuff that's going to affect you now going forward in the next I year. I think they're going to bounce back. I mean, they have a very strong mentality. They're a very good team, 
and I'm not worried about them at all. It's going to be a tough off season for them. It's probably going to propel them to an even better season next year. Because keep in mind, they had a slow start early on. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to finish it off after getting back on track, despite Percy Harvin getting kid, uh, okay. kind of kicked off the team, yeah. traded there. Um, last thing we got to mention, of course, congratulations to the New England Patriots. They are the champs. Yep. You have Bill Belichick really going down as one of the best coaches of all time, Tom Brady, as we said, basically Tommy Montana now, possibly the best quarterback of all time himself, yep. and uh, they should be proud. Gronkowski as well, man. Look at his stats this year. What an amazing season, and he's proven to be a beast. He's probably going to the Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, and good for him, man. He deserves it, and uh, it's good to see him back and healthy, and uh, he's going to be climbing the boards on the fantasy charts for next year. I just want to say I'm very disappointed that such a great Super Bowl had to end like this on a shitty call by Seattle. Be Carroll. Yeah. It's a shame, but... But you, you picked New England, so you're right. Yeah, well, I was happy, but it's <laughs> still, it's a shame to have it end that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I predicted New England, but really, I, I'm the same way. I wish Seattle would have scored at the end there. You have Belichick calling a timeout because he passed on that. And then Tom Brady scoring another final drive. That would have been an epic conclusion. Yep. Nonetheless, this is an epic conclusion in itself. Something we'll never forget. The Patriots are the champs. It's been a while. So it's not like they're in their uh, dynasty mode they were in back in the uh, 2000s, whatever you want to call it. This is a new thing for them. Gronkowski gets his first championship. And Tom Brady is once again back on top. I think the cap's the argument of uh, who's better between him and Peyton Manning because uh, he just beat the team that, that Manning couldn't. So Peyton Manning failed miserably against the Legion of Boom, and Tom Brady, with a little bit of luck, came out on top. Yep. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Make sure to stay tuned here. Trippy Commentaries will bring you a lot more football action. Of course, big draft. It's a little bit a ways to go, but we'll bring you some intel. I'm RJ for KMAC and Retro Brett. Stay trippy, everybody. Congratulations to the Patriots. Sorry, Seahawks. <laughs>